think the recording has started. Um, so the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So we were uh, looking at linear programs in the last class, and uh, so just a brief recap. So we were looking at the simplex method, the simplex algorithm. So where uh, you assume that the linear program is in the standard form. Okay, so ax equals b and x greater than or equal to zero. The feasible set is given in this manner. Okay, and we saw the steps were like this: that you identify a basic feasible solution because uh, there's going to be, if uh, the at optimal um, at optimality, there's going to be a basic feasible solution which attains the optimum value. So that's why you restrict your attention to basic feasible solutions. So the algorithm is you first identify a BFS, then you detect if the BFS is optimal. And uh, if yes, you stop. Otherwise, you identify a new basic variable to enter, which could hopefully improve the objective. And uh, now, once you identify a new basic vector, you need to identify one of the basic vectors to leave the system. Okay, because uh, you know there are exactly m basic variables or basic vectors. Okay, so if one enters, I mean, it's, you have to ensure that one of them leaves. Okay, so that's what the simplex algorithm is about. And uh, we were uh, going to each of these steps. So we started off with the last step. So where at this point you have a new, you have identified a new basic vector or a basic variable to enter. And uh, now you're trying to find which is the vector which you need to push out from this system, okay, from this uh, basic feasible solution. Okay, so uh, one thing is that the simplex method always maintains the basis as the identity matrix. Okay, so this is kind of like a loop invariant. So you probably have seen loop invariants in other places, right? Um, have you seen examples of loop invariants where you always maintain one um, concept? Okay, so is that something you've seen in other courses? Yes, yes. We have seen the concept of loop invariants. Okay, so can you give me an example? Where, where have you seen that? Uh, I can't recall an example, but like uh, we we do we can do something uh, some arithmetic with the loop variable to ensure that some constant quantity is always true in every iteration. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. So probably you. In algorithms, I mean, you might have seen uh, quicksort, right? Have you seen quicksort? Sorting algorithms? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so in quicksort, you will always maintain that, um, uh, you know, like the pivot position, right? Uh, that is something that you always maintain. like, uh, And also maybe even merge sort, like where both sides are uh, uh, sorted lists and then you try to merge them. So, so th these are some examples where you see loop invariants. So simplex also has uh, this kind of a thing where um, you know you maintain the identity as the basic, as the basic, uh, as the as the basis. Okay, and uh, so uh, so we were seeing this part exactly, and I made some errors towards the end of the class. So uh, the idea was that you know the identity as a basis and you know you write this sort of tableau form where there are these m column vectors so uh, and m i mean there are m rows right so this a is of size r m cross n okay where m is less than n okay and so uh, this is an identity of size m I mean, identity matrix of size m and the rest of them correspond to non basic variables and this is exactly the value this is what the vector b looks like um, in some after some transformations. Okay, the transformations are exactly those that make these uh, the basic the basis as identity. Okay, and then what we said that you know we've identified some uh, non-basic vector, which in the next step you hope that that is going to enter the basis. So that was this uh, column. So this was column p, which uh, is going to enter the basis. And uh, now you need to find one of these uh, already existing bases to one of these columns to move out. Okay. So one thing to note here is that each of these rows also you can associate with the basic variables. Okay. For example, 
uh, in this case, x1 to xm, those are the basic variables. So if you look at the first row, that is going to give you uh, the value of x1, right? Because all these are going to be 0. So if you multiply this row with uh, x1, x2, and so on up to xn, what you're going to get is x1 is equal to y10. Okay, you're going to get this. Okay, and similarly, the second row also corresponds to x2 and so on. Okay, so in this case, like whatever is the identity, right? I mean, the that is the uh, uh, variable to which this row corresponds. Okay, wherever you have the one. So here, uh, yeah, this column corresponds to x2. So yeah, this is exactly even this row corresponds to x2. Okay, so uh, so the thing was you wanted to find which one leaves the system. And uh, so this step entirely looks at maintaining the feasibility of the new solution. Okay, there's nothing to do with the objective here. Okay, so uh, so the current solution you have is x1 is y10, x2 is y20, okay, and so on. And all the others, xm, uh, so this is up to xm, you have this, xm is ym0, and xm plus 1 is uh, xm plus 2, and all these are going to be 0. Okay, so that is a current basic uh, solution, current feasible solution that you have. Okay, so now suppose you bring in, uh, you know, xp. So by, by, in, by bringing in the column vector p, it means that what you're going to do is you're going to bring xp into the basis. So the current basis was x1 to xn. These were the basic variables. Now you're going to bring in xp here and you want to remove some vector q. So Q is in this set. So XQ belongs to this. XQ will be removed. OK, so now uh, if you do that, let's just see what happens to this system. OK, so in terms of the current system itself, if uh, this XP value here that is going to take a non zero value, so then what you will have is X1 plus uh, Y1P XP is going to give you Y10. OK. So at the moment, this is 0. But let's see what happens if you change this. Okay, And uh, so if you are going to push x1 out, so xp then will become xp is uh, y10 by y1p. Okay, And if you, instead, if you make if you make x2 leave, right? So from the second equation, what you're going to have is x2 plus y2p xp is y20. OK? So now if xp enters and the second x2 is going to leave, so then what will happen is, uh, so in this case, x1 is 0, and, so, and xp is this. Now, in this case, what will happen is x2 becomes 0, and xp becomes y20 by y2p. Okay. So now immediately you see that whichever uh, one that enters the system, is, it should ensure that this xps are going to be greater than 0. OK, so that's why if x1 is going to leave the system, then you must have that this y10 by y1p is greater than or equal to 0. So in general, if uh, some q is some, uh, you know, if the q uh, basic variable is going to leave the system, then you must have that uh, yq0 uh, right, by yqp that has to be greater than 0. Okay, if uh, Q is the one that is uh, leaving the system. Okay, now if uh, one more thing to note here is that, uh, say, like in this case, let's take that, I assume that two is entering this, I mean, two is leaving the system. So assume X2 leaves. Okay, uh, so now the new basis is going to be X1, X3, and so on up to Xm. And you have a new uh, variable xp, which is coming in. Okay, so these are things we saw already. So let me just move it down. OK, so suppose uh, this is what is going to happen, right? X, uh, x2 is going to leave the system. So x1, x3, and up to xm, and xp, this is going to be the new basis. OK, so now in terms of these, uh, this is the system. The feasibility has to be maintained. So what you're going to have is x1 plus um, uh, what is it? Can you tell me why 1p xp, right? That has to be maintained as y10. Okay. And x2 is leaving the system. So what you had was xp is y20 by y2p. Okay. Uh, 
is so much clear is this part of it clear to you all ma'am why it has to be greater than 0 it's not clear to me okay so the uh, system is ax equals b x greater than or equal to 0 so the assumption is that you're working with the standard form in which uh, ax equals b and x has to be greater than or equal to 0 okay so the moment this is not maintained you don't have a feasible solution right so that's why uh, and yeah so uh, so you can think of this last column as exactly the values of b okay and uh, you're going i mean this is going to run over several iterations but the system is going to i mean a modified system which is equivalent to the original ax equals bx greater than or equal to 0 is going to be in this tableau okay so you whenever you create these basic solutions you need to ensure that these x's are, have to be greater than or equal to 0 okay uh, shivam is that okay yes ma'am okay okay so uh, i hope till here it's clear so if x2 is going to leave this is the going to be the new system and similarly you're going to have this for x3 also so you're going to have x3 plus y uh, 3p xp equals y30 okay so like this it's you're going to have it so now you have this value of xp okay and this has to be greater than 0 and uh, also now because xp is fixed now x1 you can compute right so x1 is going to be y10 minus uh, y1 pxp so that is just nothing but y10 minus uh, y1 p times xp is y20 y20 by y2 p y2 p and this also has to be greater than 0 okay um right okay so some Okay, so uh, this also has to be greater than zero. I mean, the values of x one, the new value of x one, has also should be greater than zero. So what this means is that you should have y one zero, uh, okay, by y one p should be greater than y two zero by y two p. Okay, it's, it's actually greater than or equal to zero because that's what the x's need to be, right? Okay, so you'll have that this condition has to be true. Now similarly, even for when you try this condition, when you write this out for x three, you you're going to get that y three zero by y three p. That should also be greater than y two zero by y two p. Okay, so this is going to be true for every other variable. So for all these, if you write, this is this condition has to be true. So in short, uh, in order to maintain feasibility. Uh, this particular value, this y two zero by y two p, should be the lowest value, okay, among all these uh, ratios. Why, if you take y one zero by y one p, y two zero by y two p, y three zero by y three p, and so on, this value has to be the smallest, okay, if you want to uh, ensure that two leaves the system, okay. So uh, that's exactly what. this condition is so in the last time i just wrote it in terms of you know in, in full generality uh, by using these row operations okay so it's the same thing that you know if uh, uh, you know if q is going to leave the system one other way to think of it is you this uh, uh, p is going to enter and in this position you need to have this as a 1 this by q p that should get transformed to 1 so when you do these row operations what you're going to do is in the first row you're going to uh, you know subtract out this ratio y1 p by y q p times uh, this second i mean this q row okay and so the same thing will happen even to this last column as well so y10 it's going to get transformed to y10 minus uh, i mean y10 by uh, y q p uh, times y q0 right so uh, so all these values have to be greater than 0 and so that's why we get this criteria that you just take this ratios of this yq0 by yqp yi0 by yips so it's basically you have this column which had to enter so you take this ratio this uh, the last column that you have you take this ratio of y10 by y1p now you take y20 by y2p and so on and then you find the minimum value 
okay and that is the one which will uh, enter the system i mean that is the one which will lead the system okay uh, is this idea clear i will explain it with an example uh, again but uh, is so much clear to you yes okay shivam is clear what about the others Uh, Siddharth, yes, yeah, she is clear. Uh, clear. Okay. 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 Fine. Okay. So let's just see an example of this. So I'm going to take the system. Uh, I mean, so the objective it doesn't matter for this step, and uh, this is the feasible uh, region that's given to me. Okay. So let's first write the tableau. Okay, I think we did this in the last class, but I just want to go over it once more. So the tableau here is you just take the coefficients, right? So can someone tell me the first row of the tableau? Uh, somebody, you're all very quiet today. I want you to speak up. Okay, I think I'll have to. Ask specific people then. Uh, Aditi, can you tell me the tableau, the first row of the tableau? Uh, hello. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah. uh, it would be a uh, one, uh, one minus one and one. One. Okay. And uh, so there are actually six variables here. So for the rest of yeah. so the other two, you will write zero, zero, zero. zero. And uh, you'll also write this value, which is on the right hand side. So which is five. Okay, so let me just demarcate it with this so that it's clear. Okay, yes, so okay, good. So what about the second row? Can someone someone else tell me? Okay, uh, you have to speak up. Okay, Tushar. One uh, two minus two. three. One, zero. Yes, yes. One and three. Uh, this will be zero because this okay, is yeah. x six. Okay. X six. Okay. And okay, and this is going to be three, right? Okay. And the last one is in a similar manner. You will get minus one, two, minus one, zero, zero, one, and minus one. Okay. So now, uh, suppose I'm fixing this as my basis. So the basic variables are going to be x4, x5, x6. Okay, uh, these are the values, the current BFS. Okay, and so this means that uh, the current assignment is x4 is equal to five. Okay, all these other values are zero. So x1, x2, and x3. These are all going to be zero. These are the non-basic variables. Now uh, x4 is five. X uh, X five is three, and X six is minus one. Okay, so it, it cannot be the case, right? It has to be feasible. So let us say that uh, you know, for the exam purposes of the example, this is just one. Okay, because we have a feasible solution already. I want to start off with a basic feasible solution. So let me say say that this is going to be the assignment of values. Okay. Now I'm telling you that uh, I'm going to bring in this. Okay. Somehow I did some computation. Uh, I will explain this later. But uh, suppose I decided that this is the new one which was going to come in. Okay. So this is the new entering uh, vector, basic vector. Okay. So that would mean that the new basis, the new BFS, would have x1. Okay, and uh, the potential candidates. Okay, so x1 union one of these. So x1 would be there, and x4, x5, x6. At the moment, these are the ones. Now you need to push out one of these. So one of these has to be pushed out. One of these to be removed. Okay. So uh, as per this, what you had to do was you had to compute this ratio yq0 by yqp. So, uh, so again, this one was at the moment it corresponds to uh, x4 and 
this corresponds to x5 and this row corresponds to x6 okay so now let us compute these ratios so the ratio is this value so this is the last column you need to take the ratio with the columns which called the column which is entering okay so if you look at so this is going to be the y so this is going to be y10 and this is y20 and this is y30 okay and i need to take the ratio with this one okay so the ratios are going to be 5 by 1 so that is one value the other value is 3 by 2 okay and the final one is what minus 1 okay so uh, is this clear how i took the ratios and why i took this particular set of values is the ratios guys is it clear devyani yes okay so um, so out of these you see that you take can the you small repeat it once the yeah, ratios and that why you uh, are saying that the first row and first element will be coefficient of x4 so, oh no no it's okay, okay so uh, i don't mean that this is a coefficient of x4 so what i mean when i wrote when i wrote x4 x5 x6 here is that each of these rows are also associated with the basic variables okay in the sense that this row is going to give you the value of x4 because uh, this is designated for x4 because now uh, all these are zero i mean all these um, x1 x2 x3 those are zero now if i just take this equation i'm going to directly get the value of x4 from here okay because this will give you 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 minus x3 plus x4 is equal to 5 right so and all these other values are zero so x4 is going to take the value 5 so directly this row is going to give me the value of x4 so that's why you also think of it as you can associate each row also with a basic variable okay so i don't mean that this is the coefficient of x4 no that's not the meaning okay shiva yes ma'am Okay, so uh, I would like you all to pay attention to this because this thing, it's not very easy to grasp this from many textbooks, okay? So whatever questions you have, you have to ask me, okay? Um, okay, so the ratio I took was 5, 3 by 2, and minus 1. And of this, I need to take the smallest value, which is greater than or equal to 0. So then this gets ruled out, okay? And so the only value is 3 by, I mean, 3 by 2 and 5 are there. And the smallest is this 3 by 2. Okay. So that corresponds to this row. Okay. So it's as if x5 is going to leave the system. Okay. So in the sense that, you know, uh, this is the new entering vector. So x1 is, uh, this corresponds to x1. So now the value of x1 is going to be 3 by 2. Because x5 is going to leave. Okay, and uh, then what you're going to get is, uh, you know, you, you will do some row operations and you will transform this row. I mean, this particular entry here has to become a one and these two values have to become zero. Okay, so let's just uh, maybe write the new tableau. Okay, so is this step clear, like how, why we chose, uh, you know, X5 to leave the system? Uh, Vipul, you said you didn't understand why you're taking. So, uh, which part? Was it the ratios or what? The ratios. Okay. So, uh, so I don't know if this uh, up to this was clear. Like, you know, this uh, same thing about, you know, you're trying to see which one leaves the system. Right? So, uh, so it's exactly, I mean, is this idea clear? Like, why these ratios were computed in this manner? Yes. Okay. So now here I'm just uh, applying this here. Okay. So these y20, y2p, uh, or y10, y1p, it's exactly the same thing. I'm just writing it with respect to the tableau. Okay. So, uh, so actually, in this case, these are the basic variables. So this was the identity that you saw here. 
okay so here it's written in the beginning and in this case it's just written towards the end okay so these are the basic variables so now this corresponds to so it's as if these uh, the remaining part this corresponds to the non basic variables and in terms of notation this was going to be y11 y12 y13 okay and uh, so this is what is uh, actually this column for example here the one that we wrote here y1 m plus 1 so that actually becomes this uh, column okay and in fact this is the pth column so you can think of that as this column y1 p y2 p y and p we wrote right so that actually is going to correspond to this column okay and uh, similarly here this is going to be y22 y23 like that okay y33 y 32 by 31 okay okay so this is y21 okay so it's uh, don't get uh, you know lost with the notations so the thing is just that you know if you were to remove uh, x4 from the system right so then what would happen is uh, you would just try to see here from here you would try to say x1 plus x4 is 5 okay and x4 was going to leave so then this would uh, boil down to setting x1 to 5 okay now suppose instead you let x5 leave what you would do is um, you would have uh, so you would get something like this 2 x1 i mean all these correspond to the zero basic variables i mean zero non basic variables so this is corresponding to x2 and this column corresponds to x3 so these are zero so 2 x1 plus x5 would give you 3 from the second row okay so uh, uh yeah so 2x1 plus uh, x5 would give you 3 and uh, so then x uh, so i think i again did some thing so suppose you were uh, yeah x2 x1 plus x5 is that's correct no so yeah so x5 is going to leave the if x5 was going to leave the system then you would get x1 is 3 by 2 Okay, and uh, maybe let's just write these cases for uh, what happens if uh, you know in this example itself. Okay. So, okay, so now let's take that you know suppose x four was going to leave here, so x four leaving, that would mean that x one would be five. Can you tell me what is going to happen to so x four was leaving, so this one would go. And x five and x six. Can you tell me what these values would be? So now you need to take the second row, right? So this would give you what two, uh, two x one, right? And uh, you would have plus x five was going to give you three, right? And if x four was uh, leaving the system, then you would fix x one as five, okay? And then x five would take the value of three minus two x one, so that would give you what is this value going to be? Minus seven. Minus seven, right? So this is clearly not acceptable because x five is taking a negative value. So that's why uh, it cannot be that x four is leaving. So in short, that's why the ratio that you take. So if you took uh, instead that x five was going to leave, what you would get is x one is going to be three uh, by two. So because two x one plus x five is three, and x five is going to leave, so this is going to become zero. So x one is three by two. Okay, and um, so now the new basis would be since x five is leaving, it would be x one, x four, and x six. So now, if you look at this, the first row again. So what you would get is x one plus x four is five, right? And so you would get x four is five minus three by two. Okay, so that is still greater than zero. It's fine. So similarly, if you take for x six, you will get uh, minus x one. So this would uh, again be. So okay, let this be here. So x one is three by two. Um, yeah. So now x six, if you take, you are going to get this row. 
okay so you would get minus x1 plus x6 is going to be 1 so all these are going to take it's as if all these are going to take uh, zero value so x2 is 0 x3 is 0 x4 is 0 because it's leaving and x5 it's anyway doesn't play a role in this last equation so now what you're going to get is x6 is 1 plus x1 and uh, x1 was 3 by 2 so this is also okay this is also going to be greater than 0 greater than or equal to 0 so that's why i mean this ratio is what plays a role because this ratio serves as the value which will get subtracted out from the others okay so you can again uh, you know uh, do these row operations and verify for yourself okay uh, so i don't know if this idea is clear like how you you know choose the uh, next uh, uh, you know vector to leave the system right uh, any questions on any more questions people is it clear Okay, there's a complete silence. Somebody has to tell me what's going on. It's clear? Okay. Ma'am, if you are taking the uh, the value which has least ratio, mm -hmm. so but it is how we are saying that all other x are going to be greater than 0. So yeah. That part is not clear to me. That part's not clear. So, uh, so now when you fix, so the thing comes about how you do these kind of row operations, right? So, uh, so you remember the way to uh, base simplex works is by maintaining this, maintaining this as the basis as the identity. Okay. So, uh, so now if this is going to enter as the new basic vector, okay. So what it's going to happen is this column has to be one of these three has to get transformed to either one zero zero. 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1. Okay. So if x4 is going to, uh, you know, leave the system, so that means this one. Okay. So this, uh, in, so that means x1, this first column, is coming in in place of this 1, 0, 0. Okay. So then it should become, uh, this will get transformed to 1, 0, 0. Right. So uh, that's where these row operations come into picture. Okay, so I just didn't go <clears throat> go over these row operations because it's again, uh, it's just a matter of you know these notations. Okay, so uh, it's because you're trying to transform everything into I mean that column into some permutation of zero one zero zero. I mean to have exactly one of these entries will get transformed to one. Okay, so if if the qth uh, row, I mean if the qth uh, uh, one is the one that's leaving. If the if x q is the one that's leaving the basis, then what's going to happen is this is going to get transformed into form where all these are going to be zero, and only this y q p this value has to become a one, and everything else below it has to become zero. Okay. So now if you're doing that, you have to change the entire tableau. Okay, because otherwise the system of equations will change. Right. And so the way you uh, get to this is by doing these row operations. Okay. So now when you do these row operations, this, these are also going to change. Y1, 0, Y2, 0. All of these are going to change. And the way it changes is going to be in this form. See, like why the qth row, if you're selecting the qth row as the one that's leaving the basis, the qth row gets divided by yqp because you want to make this entry as a 1. Okay, and everything else, every other row you take, that will get uh, subtracted from the qth row. Okay, so if I'm taking the ith, uh, what is the change to the rest of the tableau? So qth row is taken care of. Now, if I look at row i, how that is going to change is you want to make, uh, you know, the, you know, for all these uh, these entries, you want to make those as zero. So the way you do this is you will divide this. Uh, Q throw by yqp so that will this value will become a one and then you will subtract out y1p from this row i mean the modified row right i mean this one's divided by yqp and with this one that was divided by yqp you will mul again multiply that row with y1p the simple row operations right so in that process this is going to be the update that you will get Okay, so yij minus uh, yip by yqp. 
okay times the yqj so this is the ij entry so i throw and the j column okay so that's going to happen for every part of the tableau will change and in particular the last column will also change in this way so y i 0 becomes y i 0 minus by the same um, reasoning okay and uh, this last row this is the one that gives the values of the x's the new variables okay and that should also take a value greater than or equal to zero okay and it's because you want this to be true for every row in every row you want this column to take values greater than or equal to zero that's why you look at the one now if you take this ratio yq0 by yqp this is exactly this one that's coming here yq0 by yqp okay and uh, so this quantity has to be greater than zero for all the i's so that's why you need to have that yq0 by yqp should be less the minimum value among all these ratios you compute okay so if you do this as the mini if you take this as a minimum uh, non i mean minimum positive value which is uh, i mean out of all these ratios for all the rows then um, you know when you compute the new basic feasible solution which will give which will give this which will turn out to be this all the values of x's will be greater than or equal to zero okay uh, i don't know if shivam things got clearer or it's, more clear now. it's clear okay okay so um so yeah so for this example that we tried out here like if we fix this as the basic vector which was entering then um the one x5 was the one that would have to leave the system okay now similarly like you can try to see okay you can try to work this out yourself what happens if instead of this first column you say that the second column has to enter so that is equivalent to saying that x2 enters the basis and one of x4 x5 x6 have to leave so try this out uh, as a homework okay and see what solution you get okay you don't have to submit this it's uh, just to give you practice on this step okay uh, now uh, so we saw one view of this in terms of these row operations. Now another way to just see this in terms of uh, this column view. Okay, so the current basic feasible solution is x1 to I mean basic variables are x1 to xm, and if a1 to am are the columns of uh, the matrix A, okay, so then what it's happening is a linear combination of these columns is giving you B. Okay, uh, that's just uh, that should be quite obvious right it's a linear combination of these columns and the weights are given by these x's and that is going to give you b because all the others xm plus one to xn those are all zeros okay now uh, the new basis vector so the assumption is that this is a basis a1 to a is a basis for rn so now the new basis vector that you have identified that can also be represented using a1 to a Okay, it can be represented as a linear combination of A1 to A because this is a basis. Okay, uh, so this you can think of as the entries of the tableau itself, and with this case, its identity. Okay, so now AP, uh, you can write this as a linear combination of A1 to AM, and exactly this Y1, P, Y2, P, those are the ones. So if you look at this vector AP, AP was this one. Okay, and that you can represent using these columns. I mean, this is just the identity basis. So it's y one p times the first column, plus y two p times the second column, and so on up to y m p times the mth column. Okay, so that is the representation here. Now, um, so if you want to bring in a p into the system, okay, uh, so. It's the idea is, I mean, the similar thing uh, can be viewed in terms of what you did for the carrot theories theorem. Okay, so the way you can do is you can think of as you multiply this with some epsilon. Okay, and uh, so that's going to give you this system. I've just multiplied this equation with epsilon. Okay, some epsilon, which we are going to find. And uh, now if I use these two, this equation, as well as uh, this equation, what I'm going to get is the coefficient of a1 becomes x1 minus epsilon y1p. So this and this. Now for a2, if you take, it becomes x2 minus epsilon y2p and so on. And uh, OK, so that is the case for all these up to an. Now, additionally, you have this uh, 
epsilon ap as well which comes in okay so what i'm doing here is this is suppose i call this equation 1 and this is equation 2 so what i'm doing in this step is actually equation 1 minus equation 2 okay so uh, so additionally you have this epsilon ap so and this is going to give you zero right um right okay sorry it's going to give you b okay so let me just yeah, it's not zero it's going to give you b so because the right hand side was b so this is a representation for b in terms of the vectors a1 and so on up to am and additionally one more ap so now since you want a basic feasible solution which has exactly m components one of these have to go out so you have decided that this is going to enter epsilon ap so this is going to enter so uh, the one of these other variables have to become zero so it's as if these uh, part right x1 minus epsilon y1p that can be thought of as the new value of x1 okay in the next basis in the next bfs and this would be x2 tilde and so on and this is going to be xq tilde okay so as you uh, you know epsilon is some positive quantity so uh, how these other values change x1 tilde up to xm tilde so either they're going to increase they're going to decrease or they're going to remain the uh, same okay so you want one of them to leave so uh, let's say the qth one is going to leave so xq minus epsilon yqp has to become zero okay so uh, right so for that case for that to happen this epsilon has to be fixed to xq by yqp okay and uh, so it's it's just an alternate view of whatever I told you. And you want all these x1 tilde, x2 tilde, and so on to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? and including this epsilon. So that's why uh, this condition comes. So, it, so you in general, you want every xi minus epsilon yip to be greater than or equal to 0. okay? And uh, in particular, so uh, if you fix epsilon as you know uh, the qth one so xq by by qp so so that this quantity becomes zero so then this is what is going to happen xi minus xq by by qp and uh, so in terms of the previous notations this xq was exactly the y q zero value right so xq uh, corresponded to this last entry right by qp so that from this original basis you got xq as y qp sorry yq0 and uh, so that's what happened here okay uh, so that's why you the queues are chosen in this manner so that you know this is just another view of seeing it in terms of the column space okay uh, okay so i you're all very quiet today so i don't know what whether it's clear or whether it's not clear or uh, yeah, please speak up, okay? That's, uh, it doesn't help anybody if you're silent. Ma'am, okay? so will you take uh, that epsilon to be minimum of the ratios? So yes, that's... exactly, exactly. So that's why this epsilon will be fixed as the minimum value of all these ratios. Exactly, you're right. Okay. Um, so minimum possible value, which will ensure that, you know, one of them will leave the system and uh, so one thing to note here is that uh, we always wanted this epsilon to be greater than or equal to zero right because this is going to be the value of um, uh, the corresponding value so this is going to be the value of xp okay in the new uh, bfs and you wanted that to be greater than or equal to zero so now what happens if you can't find anything which is greater than or equal to zero, right? In, you computed all these ratios. Suppose none of them were greater than or equal to zero, right? All of them took negative values. That can happen, right? Uh, so in that case, what happens is that this epsilon value is going to be negative, right? And uh, if you take the min or any value you fix for epsilon, any of these ratios that you fix is going to become negative here. So what is going to happen here is all these x1, x2, xq, these are all greater than zero because you started off with a basic feasible solution. And uh, so now by you know removing this epsilon times yi piece, so what's going to happen is this is further going to increase. So the thing is that if epsilon is less than zero, it means that this yqp, 
okay or, or actually all these y1 y1 p y2 p y q p y m p everything is less than zero okay otherwise this epsilon cannot i mean there will be at least one which has a positive value okay uh, so because all these are going to be less than zero and so epsilon is also going to take a value less than zero because in particular this ratio is going to be negative so now the new point x1 tilde x2 tilde and so on if you take that's going to have everything. I mean, it will have like even the values will be more. So you won't be able to move out one qth variable. So this will never become zero. Okay, for all of them, the values are going to increase. These x tilde are going to increase. Okay, so this is a sign of you know the system being unbounded. Okay, because you're not able to push out one of them. Okay, and uh, whatever you are trying to do, you are uh, ending up you know, um, having the excess increase. And this will go on and on. So that will lead to, and I mean, that is a sign of an unbounded system. Okay. Uh, so I want you to try one example here. Okay. So let us just see this. So X1, um, let's X1 minus X3 minus X4 equals 1. Okay. And another part is x2 minus x4 is 1. Okay, so suppose this is the example that I'm that I have. Okay, and uh, the tableau will be what can you tell me? Can somebody tell me the tableau? Okay, the time is running. So you have to tell me quickly. Oh, this is one a system. Zero, minus one, minus one. One, one. zero, minus one, minus one, one. One. Uh, and then zero, one, zero, minus one, one. Zero, minus one, one. OK. So now uh, I'm fixing the basis as x1, x2. So this is the basis. So I'm fixing x1, x2. So this row corresponds to x1, and this is x2. OK. And now suppose I'm fixing that this one this is going to enter okay so this is entering the basis so that means i'm going to fix x4 x4 is entering okay so now if uh, the ratios are what can you tell me the ratio the corresponding ratios that we wanted to compute so it's it's just this, right? I mean, this, whatever you have on the last column, the ratio of these two, right? So one divided by minus one, and again, one divided by minus one. So both these ratios are minus one, right? So, okay, so both are, you know, less than zero. So there is, so this is an indication of an unbounded system. So if you're going to now uh, change the values of x1, x2, and x4, what you're going to get is you will not be able to move x1 and x2 out of the system. Okay, So uh, yeah, I hope this is clear. Uh, you're all quiet, so it's not very clear to me whether things are OK or not. Uh, so anyway, so this is one step of the simplex algorithm. And the next step, I'm, I mean, uh, the idea is to see which is the new basis element. We so far assume that something was given to you, the basis element, which is going to enter, I gave it to you. But the next uh, step is to see which, which one is going to enter the system. OK, so that is actually going to be the step 3A. OK, so that comes actually before uh, identifying which one to leave. Uh, but I felt that it's uh, maybe easier to understand things in this way. OK, so uh, I think, again, we are. Uh, running out of time. I was hoping to complete 3A step today, but anyway, never mind. So we will do this in the next class. So uh, yeah, thanks for coming. I'll hang back for any other questions. So uh, see you tomorrow.